Drew, I know you're going to love this next tier. I grouped these two teams together in the same oh, one. Lord. Tier six, aging star-led teams, the <laughs> Lakers and the Warriors. Between the Lakers and the Warriors, who do you guys trust more to at least make a little bit of noise in the postseason? Talk to me, Jack. No hater, no hater shit. No hater shit. I still think it's the Warriors. I, the Warriors have shown more lately. Uh, oh, my I God. Mean, you uh, surprised the shit out of me right there. Bro, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, Locked yeah, in the rain lawn, man. The Warriors, yeah, with it's just been a complete 180. Honestly, since Kaminga went off on Kerr in the media, it feels like it's a different team because that, uh, yeah, Kaminga is playing the best ball of his career. That lineup where it's uh, Steph Podjemski, who is a legitimate, AirPod. like, mm-hmm. good NBA player. Like, he, 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 you see those teams or those players on good teams that get a little bit more media than they deserve. Podjemski is not one of them. He is phenomenal. He's a really good defender. The way he him drawing a charge, like the second I see him step in to take the charge, I'm like, get the fucking ball to the other side of the court. Like we are we are changing <laughs> possession. Indeed. So yeah, when it's Steph, Podjemski, uh, Wiggins, Kuminga, and Draymond, it's a lineup that has some size concerns because nobody really is above like six seven, but uh they've been phenomenal on both ends of the floor. And to be honest, I see a world where Clay you know, accepts the point that he's at in his career and uh, takes a smaller role, comes off the bench, even a bench where it's Chris Paul and Clay Thompson going against the NBA's backups. That's a unit that could really do some damage. So I, I don't know. Uh, I like the Warriors or I like the Lakers. And I think uh, there is a world where they make a run as well. But I think the Warriors have just given us a little bit more to go on in recent weeks. I would have to agree with that. Yep. Right, John. You can go with just that add one. on to the fire no it's okay go ahead add on to the fire, <laughs> sure uh you hit the nail on the head with jonathan kaminga taking a huge step forward 19 points per game his last 25 but i think a big part of the warrior struggles was their defense not being good enough you get draymond and gary payton back in the lineup which they have their defense can reach passable levels and in most games that's going to give them a much better chance they've won six of their last seven they lost tough one the other night but generally they're starting to get above 500 and they're going to be, if they play the Timberwolves in the first round, they're going to be the one team that can really present some matchup challenges with Steph, just being able to pull bigs out in space. So, Joel, do you want to add anything to... to, to... <laughs> oh, listen, I think, you know, I'm leaving okay. the analysis to the smart people on, on the panel. You know, I think John Jack said some really smart things. I, I third that. I third their comments. Mm-hmm. You know, I think mm-hmm. uh, they're making... You're, on, you're in on points. the Warriors over them. Warriors over the Lakers. Yeah, I Mr. am. Mr. Been Vocal about the Warriors. They're done. Listen, they're, they're done. both done. They're, th- realistically, they are both done. I don't see yeah, them right. doing anything. But yeah. but I will say this. I think Jonathan Kaminga breaking out was huge because Andrew Wiggins has stunk it up. In, the, in a perfect world, I, I think the Warriors have more good NBA players than the Lakers. If Wiggins <sighs> figures it out and Kaminga plays at the level – AirPods is getting more minutes. Like Jack mentioned, Clay accepts his role. And we got to start having a conversation about Clay being one of the worst superstars at handling it's... his downfall in history. They slandered Russell Westbrook for that. They slandered so many legends like and Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony and AI yep. for that. But Clay Thompson, the comments he's been making, soaking on the court. I mean, this is the worst I've ever seen somebody handle being washed. But yeah, the Warriors just have better NBA players, bro. But the Lakers. What I will say about you guys, your defense is truly elite. It is. I just don't trust the spacing enough, and I nope. don't trust the backcourt defensively with Reeves and D'Lo, and I don't okay. trust D'Lo in the playoffs. There's just a lot of things with them that it makes me hesitant to believe. No, it, it's, way, it's beautiful. All right, John, go ahead. The Lakers go ahead. elite defense, 14th in defensive rating, and 18th in opponent's points per game. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah, they really suck. Actually, yeah. they're not even good. Yeah. They're bad. We, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, we've we've uh. fallen off a little bit defensively, uh, but I think that we have found ourselves offensively. Uh, the last the last seven games, we are six and one in the month of February. We do have three guys, uh, four guys. Excuse me, forget about that. Four guys averaging twenty or more points. D'Angelo Russell in the month of January was exceptional. Uh, just shooting the ball at an amazing clip, uh, ability to to facilitate the offense as well. I think that's what I've loved most about watching this most recent Lakers run is seeing how 
there's been so much conversation about uh, this is still too much LeBron reliant, uh, especially the questions last uh, postseason run to it's Oh, how is LeBron going to come back and impact the roster? Where is he going to be too much on ball and it's going to ruin Reeves? It's going to ruin what they have with D'Lo, but we saw what he did. He accepted an off ball role and allowed Reeves and D'Lo and of course, Anthony Davis to get theirs. Now, recently we're seeing something similar where, who has a majority of the offensive responsibility? Of course, the answer is still LeBron, but who still who has been able to to be consistent in their role? It's been D'Angelo Russell. We've seen Austin Reeves really cook up recently. Anthony Davis all season long. I tweeted this last night. I still firmly believe it. He is a tier one superstar. He is arguably the best defensive player in the league on top of it being one of the more dominant offensive players this season. He's been consistent. He 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 is there night in night out. Yes, we I would love if he he could find that 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 three-point shot that he left at the bubble, but being realistic, he still can hit from the mid-range. He's been awesome from the free throw line. Obviously lives down low near the glass, but I I, I just love what I've been seeing from the two guards of D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves because early on in the season we know that both of those guys were whether it was who was going to play, who's going to start, who's going to be the six man off the bench. I feel like that's where, where we focus too much on the players. It's been a lot on Darvin and finding that consistent rotation for the Lakers. The lineup of D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, and Anthony Davis, or I didn't even mention LeBron James, that's the five that's going to be best for our offense. I agree with you. The perimeter defense is a, is a concern, but – we understand that Austin Reeves, whether the, the defensive advanced stats tell you that he's a bad defender or not, I don't believe he is a bad defender, but against great matchups, which unfortunately is a lot of the matchup that he does have to take on, he's going to get he's going to get scored on, but he actually is still working hard and he's still putting in a ton of effort on defensive side of the ball. We're never going to get, a, get a, a good defender out of D'Angelo Russell. But again, everyone on this team gives effort on the defensive side outside of LeBron James. But when you need him to step up for a possession, he can. I do look at the Golden State Warriors and understand where you guys are coming from, where Steph Curry's still playing some high-level basketball. Draymond Green now coming back from suspension. He's obviously the connector to this offense in terms of getting people into their spots and facilitating the rock, being that defensive anchor. And then Jonathan Kaminga and his ascension. Uh, you mentioned AirPod already. You, you understand what, what he's been able to do, especially as that, that secondary guard and Clay Thompson, where where I figured that he would find himself, it hasn't been the case. But Kerr has done a good job, especially after getting called out, trusting these guys that have been playing at a high level and and consistently going to them in the minute in the minutes that matter. Except last night, where you see the game kind of get thrown away. But I won't allow that to cloud what's been some so a solid stretch of basketball games from the Golden State Warriors. I trust the Lakers because. I've seen what we've been able to do, especially last season. We don't have we don't have that great perimeter defense, but I'll tell you what, I trust that our offense will be better this season come postseason time because now we'll have a healthy LeBron James in the postseason. And now we're seeing D Lo at his most confident that he's Playing probably D-Lo, baby. since his time in Brooklyn. He looked comfortable. He's trusting himself. He's he's been a great playmaker for us, which I think has been the most more underrated part of his game. But this is a team that I feel like gets disrespected just because people don't like them and, and they haven't been playing consistent basketball. They're not that good. In the months of, but but uh, what are we not good at that makes you think that we still can't contend? Well, your defense is average. Defense at the same time, a player but that you just has said our defense was elite, but you're going to go off the the defensive rating stat because I was true. Our don't, your I was best point of attack defender is Cam Reddish. You don't have Jared oh, Vanderbilt. You don't have. He's Gabe been Vincent. injured. You're Cam Reddish is not good. Cam, Cam Reddish, Reddish is not for half good. This season, he's not a starter on like 25 teams. Your Cam best Reddish defenders can't effort. play in the playoffs. That's what sucks. Yeah. Cam Cam Reddish is not good, but again, you, we can't play in the playoffs, but. They did for two series and was able to get us to the Western Conference Finals. I understand it's a new year, and I understand that that we don't have that same level, especially with Jaron Vanderbilt, unfortunately, being out. Hopefully, he does come back relatively soon. Uh, but I still think that with the way that our offense has been playing, where if you say our offense isn't good, you haven't been watching recently because D'Lo, Reeves, LeBron, AD have just been on one all together at the same time. I believe that when you have two guys playing at that level, that's obviously that's usually good enough. But when you have 
four of them playing at this level. And if we can start to get Rui Hachimura trending in that direction, I really believe that this offense is a lot better than what it's being given credit for. So when Vanderbilt's healthy, what do you like? Is he taking Hachimura's spot in that lineup, or is he just playing like spot minutes or what? Spot minutes. He'll probably play spot minutes, most likely. Okay. All right. I, I really I I don't like I the Lakers have been good recently and they've been impressive. And the answer to the Reeves D question being just fucking playing both at the same time, that shocked me. I, I was sold out on them and they have proved me wrong on the offensive side of the basketball, 110%. Um, it does just concern me like a I don't know. When we talk about Minnesota and like a a great defensive baseline where the offense just needs to lock in sometimes, I feel a little bit more comfortable with that dynamic, not to mention like the talent side of it, but just straight up the dynamic as opposed to a team that has a great baseline offense that can just lock in defensively for spurts. I think that's uh, a a worse recipe for a postseason setting. Uh, Yeah. I just, um, in terms of like players, that are passable at one end of the ball while being good at the other, it doesn't feel like Los Angeles has that many of those. And I do think Reeves is a good positional defender. I think he's smart and he knows where to be and he has good hands and stuff like that. But like you mentioned, him being good on this team leads to him guarding a lot of great players. Sure. That's uh, Yeah, it just doesn't work very point. well. 